In this lesson, we're going to go through some of life's little ups and downs, but in airplanes, we call them climbs and descents. We're going to learn more about the relationship between pitch and power and how you use them to climb or descend in the airplane. We're also going to learn a little bit about the flaps and how you use them. As always, because this is a simulator, we'll use the attitude indicator as our primary reference instrument. So take a look at it to see what it's telling you. It shows that we're in a straight and level flight attitude. A quick scan of the other instruments will confirm this. Check the tachometer on the lower right hand corner of the instrument panel for the power setting. This shows your current power setting is about 2400 RPMs. Climbing an airplane consists of three steps. First, we'll establish the proper pitch attitude. In this airplane, that's about 12 and a half degrees nose up pitch. Next, we'll apply power, as in push the throttle forward. Then we'll trim the airplane. Anytime we enter a climb, we always, and that is always, do these three steps in this order. We change the attitude first, then power next, then trim last. Think of this as a mantra and your aviation kung fu will always be strong. Watch as I demonstrate a climb to 4,000 feet now. Pay attention to how I adjust the attitude first, then power next, and finally the trim last. I begin by raising the nose to an attitude that I know from experience is proper for the climb. In this case, it's approximately 10 degrees nose-up pitch. I push the throttle all the way in because in most small airplanes we always climb with full power. As the nose comes up, the airspeed begins to decrease. To learn about why this happens, read the ground school section on climbs and descents. When the attitude selected gives me 75 knots, I give it enough nose-up trim to hold the airplane in this pitch attitude. And that's it. No smoke or mirrors involved here. Besides, this is a no-smoking flight. Each airplane has a speed at which it will climb most efficiently. The manufacturer normally determines this for you. In this airplane, it's between 70 and 76 knots. But we'll use 75 knots because that number is easier to find on the airspeed indicator. As the airplane approaches within 200 feet of the assigned altitude, I begin leveling off into straight and level flight again. Remember, attitude, power, and trim in that order. I gently push the nose over to level up, thus selecting a straight and level flight attitude on the attitude indicator. Next, I adjust the power, but since I want to accelerate to cruise speed, I'll leave it at full power until reaching a cruise speed of 100 knots. When reaching this speed, I'll reduce power to 2400 RPM. Finally, I'll trim the airplane so that I don't have to work so hard. Okay, now that you've seen how it's done, it's your turn, Maestro. I want you to try a climb. Since I'm your instructor, I'm going to help you out a bit by controlling the bank. All you need to do is worry about the climb. Okay, you've got the controls. Begin by selecting the proper attitude for a climb, which is about 12 and one half degrees of nose up pitch, which is between the second and third hash marks on the attitude indicator. As you do this, I want you to add full power. Yes, you can do this as soon as you start raising the nose. Make small, and I do mean small, adjustments in pitch to give you a climb speed of 75 knots. If the airspeed is too slow, then lower the pitch attitude a degree or two. If the airspeed is too high, then raise the pitch attitude a degree or two. Remember, attitude, power, and trim in that order.
excellent job. Let me take over for a moment and hold 5,000 feet while I talk to you a bit about descents. A descent is a little different from a climb. As we select a nose down pitch attitude, we simultaneously reduce power. Remember, with power reduced, we have no choice but to come down. That's why there are no gliders stuck up in the air. We do, however, have a choice of the speed at which we want to descend. We'll make all our descents at 90 knots. Of course, we always use trim to make the airplane easier to fly, too. If we desire, we can adjust our rate of descent using the power. But for our purposes, we'll make all the descents with the throttle pulled all the way back to its idle position. Don't worry, the engine won't quit when we do this. In the descent, we don't have to pitch over very much at all. In fact, we'll almost never need to pitch down more than about two or three degrees below the horizon. With all that in mind, I think you're ready to try a descent. Remember, think attitude, power, and trim. Also remember that, with the power reduced to idle, you'll need to make a small adjustment in the attitude to give you an airspeed of 90 knots. If you're going down too fast, raise the nose just a bit, hold it there, and see what happens to the airspeed. If you're going down too slow, lower the nose a bit, hold it there, and see what happens to the airspeed. Repeat this process until you're descending at a speed of 90 knots. Ready? I'll keep the wings level for you during this descent. You worry about pitch, power, and trim. Okay, pull the throttle back to idle and descend at 90 knots to 4,000 feet. Level off there, then we'll discuss flaps. Slow down. You did a fine job, Captain. I think it's time we talk about flaps, which isn't something we do with our arms when we want to fly. When it's time to land, we don't want to land fast. No sense burning the tires off our airplane. Besides, a slower landing speed makes the airplane easier to control during touchdown. We don't, however, want to fly too slow because we'll end up stalling and this could put a dent in your day and the airplane as well. Most airplanes have flaps on the wings to allow them to fly slower. Flaps come with a price, though they increase the drag considerably. This is why we use them specifically for landing and on rare occasions for takeoffs. This airplane has four flap settings, up, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees. Normal landings are made with flaps at 30 degrees. Notice that the flap selector is displayed on the bottom right-hand corner of the panel under the tachometer. The white pointer on the right is the flap position indicator. Each time you press the F7 key, the flaps will extend 10 degrees more. F6 retracts them 10 degrees at a time. Now I want you to practice extending the flaps while we're in a power-off descent. Our goal is to be in a power-off descent at 65 knots with the flaps fully extended. You'll find that the nose of the airplane wants to pitch up as the flaps are extended, so you'll need to lower the nose in order to keep the airspeed from getting too slow too quickly. Feel free to let the airspeed decay below 90 knots since we're looking for an eventual descent at 65 knots. Ready? I'll keep the wings level for you while you control the pitch, power, and trim. Okay, reduce power to flight idle and begin a descent at 90 knots. When your airspeed is below 110 knots, the maximum flap extension speed for 10 degrees of flaps, press F7 once. 
You can watch the selector move when you press F7 and watch the indicator move to show the current position of the flaps. Adjust the pitch to maintain 65 knots of airspeed. You'll need to get that nose fairly low to maintain a speed of 65 knots. Make sure you trim to keep the airplane at the desired attitude and airspeed. Now I want you to add a little power and reduce your rate of descent on the VSI to 500 feet per minute. Use the pitch to control the airspeed and the power to control the rate of descent. You should find that around 1800 RPM will maintain that rate of descent. This is excellent practice for the landing approach that we'll be studying in an upcoming lesson. You need to be able to control the rate of descent as you approach the runway. Using power allows you to do this. When we reach 3000 feet, I want you to transition from a descent with flaps to a climb. This will be quite a challenge for you, but I think you can do it. Remember, I'm keeping the wings level for you here. You're too low. Climb. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Raise the nose to climb attitude and simultaneously add full power to climb. Now, don't let the nose come up more than 5 degrees above the horizon at first. You'll need to apply a lot of forward pressure on the joystick. Now we need to begin raising those flaps, so press the F6 key once to retract the first 10 degrees of flaps. Let the airplane stabilize and begin to accelerate, then press the F6 key again. Keep the airplane at a lower 5 degree pitch up attitude so that it will accelerate quickly. Now press the F6 key again to get rid of the last 10 degrees of flaps and adjust the attitude to give you a climb speed of 75 knots. Finally, trim for a climb speed of 75 knots. Congratulations! You've just simulated making a missed approach from a landing, which is what you would do if you get to the runway and there's something else on it, like another airplane. Okay, let's climb back to 5,000 feet and we'll turn to a heading of 270 degrees. I've got the airplane, so kick back while we climb to altitude. When we get to 5,000 feet, I'd like you to try a descent, but with a twist. I want you to make a descending turn to the right. This means that you'll not only need to adjust the pitch to maintain an airspeed of 90 knots, but you will also have to control the bank as well. Up till now, I've kept the wings level, but it's your turn to do it all. Just like in level flight, when you enter a turn, you'll have to change the back pressure on the joystick to maintain the desired airspeed. I want you to use 20 degrees of bank for all your turns. Okay, 
We're coming up on 5,000 feet while flying a heading of 270 degrees. I'm giving you control of the airplane. Ready? Speed up. Bank the wings less. Slow down. Bank the wings more. Speed up. You're too high. Descend. Slow down.